The lesson discusses the requirements to operate safely within RVSM airspace. Normal operating procedures and contingency procedures are also discussed. Historically, the standard vertical separation between aircraft was 1,000 feet from the surface to flight level 290, 2,000 feet from flight level 290 to flight level 410, and 4,000 feet above this. This separation was required because the accuracy of pressure altimeters decreases with altitude. This separation decreases airspace capacity and presents a problem in terms of operational flexibility and airspace efficiency. Modern altimeters and autopilot systems provide more accurate altitude control, which has allowed for the adoption of reduced vertical separation minima, or RVSM. RVSM is used to describe the reduction in the standard vertical separation from 2,000 feet to 1,000 feet when operating between flight level 290 and flight level 410. RVSM was first developed for aircraft flying over the North Atlantic Ocean. Since then, RVSM has been implemented in all airspace over North and South America, the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, all of Europe, North Africa, Australia, and Southeast Asia. To operate safely within RVSM airspace, an aircraft must be able to accurately maintain an altitude and provide alerts for any altitude deviations. To satisfy these requirements, certain equipment must be installed and operational. Typically, the minimum equipment list for RVSM operations will include two operationally independent altitude measurement systems, at least one automatic altitude control system, and an altitude alert system that signals an alert when the aircraft altitude deviates from the selected altitude. During preflight, the crew must pay special attention to any condition that may adversely affect the aircraft's ability to operate within RVSM airspace. First, verify that the aircraft is approved for RVSM operations. Review the maintenance logs, forms, and minimum equipment list to determine if any of the required RVSM equipment is inoperative or that any repairs have been completed. Check that the flight plan filed with ATC reflects the aircraft's RVSM capability. An RVSM aircraft will show a W listed in Field 10 of an IKO flight plan, or Block 3 of the FAA's flight plan. Check the reported and forecast weather along the route, paying particular attention to any forecasted turbulence, mountain wave, or convective activity. During the external walk-around, inspect RVSM critical areas, such as static ports, for damage that could affect the accuracy of the aircraft's altimetry system. Finally, the two altimeters should be set to the local altimeter setting and indicate within 75 feet of field elevation. Now we'll take a look at RVSM operations while in flight. During climb, prior to entering RVSM airspace, all of the required equipment must be operating normally. If any equipment is not operating normally, the crew should request a new clearance to avoid the RVSM airspace. Aerosim 1532, negative RVSM, request flight level 280. During flight, if the controller has any question on the aircraft status, they will ask, Aerosim 1532, confirm RVSM approved. Aerosim 1532, affirm RVSM. After reaching RVSM airspace, special care should be given to the aircraft's altitude control. First, 
When changing altitudes, be sure to not overshoot or undershoot an assigned altitude by more than 150 feet. The autopilot should always be connected during flight in RVSM airspace. To monitor the operational status of the altimeters, they should be cross-checked at level off and approximately every hour to ensure they are within tolerances. If any of the required equipment fails in RVSM airspace, air traffic control should be contacted to coordinate a plan of action. During post-flight, any problems that occurred should be written up for maintenance personnel. These reports must include any malfunction or failure of a required equipment component and any altimeter readings that exceed tolerances. In the maintenance write-up, be sure to include sufficient detail to enable maintenance personnel to troubleshoot and repair the affected system. In this topic, we will discuss the procedures that you, as the pilot, are expected to use and what actions ATC will take to keep you separated from other traffic. In the event that the flight can no longer operate safely within RVSM airspace, the flight crew must understand and comply with the contingency procedures. Examples of situations that could compromise the aircraft's safety include encounters with mountain wave or severe turbulence, wake turbulence, and equipment failures. We'll begin by discussing the atmospheric conditions which can result in insufficient separation of aircraft at higher altitudes. Encounters with severe turbulence cause large, abrupt changes in altitude, attitude, and airspeed, even to the point where the aircraft may be temporarily out of control. In many cases, severe turbulence may be associated with mountain wave activity. This activity generally occurs as a result of strong winds blowing perpendicular to mountain ranges. Although significant wave activity occurs below the floor of RVSM airspace, it can also extend well above flight level 290. During light to moderate mountain wave encounters, airspeed and altitude can be controlled with power adjustments. However, severe mountain wave encounters may not allow the altitude to be maintained. When mountain wave causes deviations greater than 200 feet or severe turbulence is encountered, ATC should be contacted. Denver Center, Aerosim 1532, unable RVSM due to mountain wave. The controller will then provide a vector to avoid any merging traffic at the adjacent flight levels. Aerosim 1532, turn right heading 290 degrees, traffic 12 o'clock, opposite direction, eastbound, 757,000 feet above you. In addition to the vector, ATC will provide a clearance to change flight levels or a reroute if required and issue a PIREP to other aircraft. The chance of encountering another aircraft's wake turbulence is also increased when the vertical separation is reduced. Certain actions can be taken to mitigate the chances of an aircraft upset. Maintain awareness of other aircraft, including the following. Aircraft in your vicinity that are climbing or descending through your altitude. Opposite direction traffic that has passed 1,000 feet above you. Maintain vigilance for 10 to 30 miles after the crossing. And same direction aircraft 10 to 30 miles ahead that are 1,000 feet above you. If wake turbulence is encountered, the pilot should contact ATC and request a vector, flight level change, or a lateral offset. Requesting an FMS lateral offset is an effective way to avoid wake turbulence. As discussed earlier, ATC should be notified of any failure of the required RVSM equipment. New York Center, Aerosim 1532, unable RVSM due to equipment. 
Air traffic control will then provide at least 2,000 feet of vertical separation and issue a clearance out of RVSM airspace as appropriate. If a single primary altimeter fails, increased separation is not automatically required. The aircraft can remain within RVSM airspace. If both primary altimeters disagree, the standby altimeter should be cross-checked to determine which altimeter is accurate. In either case, ATC should also be notified that the flight is operating with a single primary altimeter. If control of an inoperative system is regained, RVSM flight can be resumed. Airsim 1532, ready to resume RVSM. ATC may request aircraft status. Aerosim 1532, confirm able to resume RVSM. Aerosim 1532, affirm RVSM. Special emphasis items during flight crew training enhance safe RVSM operations and should be adhered to when the flight crew is operating above flight level 290. In order to maintain RVSM operational privileges, it is important for the flight crew to understand these items. The following items are emphasized during RVSM training. Proper ATC phraseology for operations in RVSM airspace. Adherence to clearances and prompt responses. Use and limitations of altimeters, automatic altitude control, and transponder systems. Procedures and characteristics related to TCAS use in RVSM airspace, and problems associated with visual perception of other aircraft operating with an altitude separation of only 1,000 feet. Because of the close proximity of aircraft above flight level 290, it is very important for flight crew members to cross check each other and to ensure that ATC clearances are promptly and correctly complied with. For communications with ATC, the following table describes standard phraseology during RVSM operations. It is important for pilots to report a lack of RVSM approval along with supplementary information during initial call-up and during any transmission related to a flight level change or clearance. For example, Center Aerosim 1532, flight level 310, negative RVSM, certification flight in progress. If equipped for flight in RVSM airspace and a failure occurs after entry, report any affected system to ATC as soon as possible. Unable RVSM due to altitude alert malfunction. If the aircraft regains the capability to resume operations in RVSM airspace, notify ATC as soon as possible. Altimeters and autopilots require special attention during operations in RVSM airspace because of certain inherent errors associated with these systems. RVSM-approved aircraft must comply with system tolerances during certification and during normal operations to be considered airworthy. Altimetry systems and transponders may have the following errors. Altimetry system error, assigned altitude deviation, avionics error, static source error, and total vertical error. Because of these errors, it is very important that flight crews verify climb and descent rates are not excessive, transitions to level flight do not overshoot assigned altitude, and altimeter limits on the ground and in flight are within standards. On the ground, altimeters must display values within 75 feet of airport elevation. During flight, Altimeters must be within 200 feet of one another in order to meet RVSM requirements. Loss of both primary altimeters during flight leads the flight crew to use the standby altimeter. Consider the following during use of only the standby altimeter. 
Time limits on power available to the electronic altimeter display if aircraft is using battery power only. Availability of pitot-static heat to the probes associated with the standby altimeter if operating on less than normal electrical power during icing conditions. Use of static source correction cards for the standby altimeter system if available. And loss of altitude alerting system when using only the standby altimeter. The Traffic and Collision Avoidance System issues a traffic advisory or resolution advisory when another aircraft is within close range and altitude. Because of the close proximity, TAs may be common while operating in RVSM airspace when aircraft separation may be slightly less than 1,000 feet. TAs are likely to occur in transition areas when aircraft are changing altitudes to obtain their respective 1,000 feet of vertical separation. Nonetheless, TCAS should be operated in the TARA mode during all operations in RVSM airspace. Because of the reduced aircraft separation at RVSM altitudes, flight crews must be even more vigilant to crossing traffic. Flight crews should consider the following. Limit climb and descent rates to 1,000 feet per minute when in close proximity to other aircraft in order to minimize the potential for TCAS advisories. Flight in turbulence can induce aircraft motion that the TCAS interprets as either a climb or descent, in effect causing a TA or RA. When an RA is issued, follow the advisory in accordance with approved procedures. Some TA or RA events may remain displayed for a few minutes, depending on the circumstances if the closure rate is very slow. And report to ATC as soon as practical any TA or RA event that has occurred. As previously stated, flight crew vigilance and visual contact of other aircraft increases the level of safety in RVSM airspace. Flight crews are encouraged to turn on exterior aircraft lights when in close proximity to crossing traffic. In addition, it is recommended that the flight crew monitor navigation displays for traffic while visually scanning the horizon. Seeing other aircraft becomes difficult during night operations with low visibility or local phenomena such as northern lights or a mix of clouds and city lights. For example, lights from two aircraft that are diverging may appear as one aircraft that is on a collision course with your flight path. Take extra caution during turns and other maneuvers as traffic may remain hidden beneath the aircraft wings and fuselage.